Well, hi there. It's meteorologist Chris Spears. Welcome to Weather School on CBS in Denver. Today we're going to talk about why Colorado is so hail prone. This is something that uh, we just hate to see every season. Our state gets so much hail and here's one of the big reasons. We're so hail prone because of our high altitude and our very, very low freezing levels. And what I mean by that, when you look up into the cloud, there will be a line in the atmosphere where the temperatures hit 32 degrees or colder. And during summer thunderstorms, that's normally going to be, oh, just a little above mountaintop level, somewhere between 15 and 20,000 feet. Now, remember how Colorado it has such a high average altitude. We are several thousand feet up into the atmosphere compared to a state like Florida. So when thunderstorms form and big hail falls, Colorado, that hail survives and a lot of it makes it to the ground. Whereas a state like Florida, a thunderstorm may produce hail, but it melts on the way down to the ground. And so therefore they just do not receive as much at the surface. So our high altitude plays a role. We are known is the hail capital of North America in the front range of the Rockies and some of the adjacent plain states here in the red. We can get seven to nine, sometimes even 10 days a season with hail. I guess the good news is a lot of the hail is small, but sometimes look at this last year, almost a five inch diameter stone in Bethune set a new state record as it fell on August 13th of 2019. This picture from the Colorado Climate Center. So so hail can fall at any elevation in the mountain communities. Usually hail is soft and small and June. That's probably the month that is best known for hail here in Colorado, but we can get hail as late as October in some seasons. If you're going to take a picture of hail, you see this golf ball right here. Very important to put an object in the picture with it so that there's a size reference and that can be very helpful for anything uh, from, you know, proving a claim to an insurance company to just knowing what happened. This is a list from the National Weather Service, some of the common items used to identify hail. Notice a quarter that is about one inch in diameter. A baseball's two and three quarters inches and a grapefruit fruit four and a half inch diameter hail. Here in Colorado, sometimes we can receive these hailstorms that just kind of sit and dump and dump and dump and the hail can pile up. This was in Parker last season and look at the ruts here. They had to call out snow plows to remove some of the hail off the roadway. So let's talk a little bit here about what gets a thunderstorm going and what makes hail. So you have a strong updraft feeding a thunderstorm and there's this region called the hail growth region. I want to get in here a little bit closer. This is in a cloud that we call mixed phase. What that means is above the 32 degree line, you have both liquid water and yes, water can survive. Little tiny round droplets can survive in air below 32 degrees along with little pieces of ice. So those winds, the updraft feeding this cloud and inside the cloud, it's very turbulent. The ice crystals start moving around and as they move through the super cooled water, that water Water will freeze on contact with the ice, allowing it to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. We call this accretion. And eventually, when the hailstone becomes bigger or heavier than that updraft keeping it suspended, it will fall out of the bottom of that cloud. Next time you get hail, if you want to take a look at it, slice it in half, you may notice kind of cloudy layers along with some clear layers. It turns out that gives us a lot of information about a storm. When hail forms in the lower part of the cloud. We call this the wet region. Supercooled water droplets kind of slowly spread onto the surface of the ice and the air bubbles escape. So when the ice freezes, it is clear. But if this forms in the upper part of the cloud where it's very, very cold, the water freezes on contact almost instantaneously and that traps the air bubbles resulting in cloudy ice. So when we look at a hailstone and all the different uh, layers inside, Believe it or not, you can tell a lot about the time it spent in a cloud while it was forming. We'll have more on your weather coming up in just a little bit.